Hi, welcome to another edition of CBU Conversations. I'm Jack Shannon, president of Christian Brothers University, and we're very pleased to be joined today by Jessica King, our Dean of Academic Services. Jessica, let's first start with a basic uh, question. What exactly does your department do here uh, at CBU? That's a great question, Jack. It's an important one. The academic services team partners with the campus community to help students achieve their academic, personal, and professional goals. Really, our primary objective is to facilitate student success. So this happens through a range of functions and resources, including things like academic advising, our first year experience, academic support and accommodations, and some of our great peer education initiatives. So we started these conversations uh, as a series to really talk about the uh, impact that the coronavirus pandemic has had on all of us here at CBU. Can you talk a little bit about how you and your colleagues in academic services have been working to serve our students during this period? Yes, we've been very busy, Jack, as everyone has, adapting to the need and really using that digital first approach to adjust our services, make sure that students still had the options available that we had always promised to them. So in doing that, we were able to use WebEx for advising meetings beginning right away and throughout the summer as we've been onboarding our new class. We've used Canvas for peer education and for tracking and monitoring some of our outreach efforts. And arguably the biggest change that we've experienced this summer that has been exciting is releasing our new student orientation in an online format. So you just mentioned uh what you've really been busy over the course of the summer, you and your team, is organizing our new student orientation. Can you talk a little bit about how that supports the overall onboarding process here and how it really provides a platform for future student success for our incoming students? Absolutely. New student orientation, sometimes referred to as NSO in our team, is one of those fundamental cornerstones of the first year experience. In many ways, we know it is the next touch point that students have as they begin to transition and build a bridge from the great partners that they've made in the admissions office over to really envisioning what their CBU experience is going to look like as they prepare to get started. So our NSO program is designed to be very educational to help students begin to put more faces with names and to be introduced to offices and units that will continue to support them through their transition and their entire CBU experience. We really hope that ultimately it helps students um, affirm the decision that they've made to become part of our LaSallean community, to understand what it means to be a member of that community and to build excitement about what is to come for them. Can you talk about some of the challenges that you and your colleagues faced in making the transition from what typically is an in-person experience for our students to one now that's online. Sure. So we always partner with other offices across campus to facilitate new student orientation. And we wanted to make sure that we continued that close partnership. As we considered how to do that in an online format, we leaned even more on our communications and marketing team and the really great talents of our Center for Digital Instruction team. So with those added collaborators, we were able to reimagine the structure of the entire program. We thought about the content delivery and we decided really quickly that we wanted to use a tool that would continue to be important to students. And that led us to house the new student orientation program in our Canvas learning management system. Um, it was a whirlwind to get going and to plan, but we're very proud of the content and the quality and how it all really fit together. Um, and we were able to launch just a few weeks ago to some great feedback from our incoming class. Now, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand some of the great content that you and the team have generated and for us. Uh, it's really exciting. I think it's uh, not only compelling, but very informative. Can you tell our viewers maybe a few examples of what our students will be seeing as part of the orientation? Yes. Yes, thank you, Jack. We start orientation off with some welcome messages, including a kickoff from you, Jack. So thank you for setting the tone for the experience. We also invited our academic deans to introduce each of the four schools as part of welcoming messaging and letting students really imagine who they're going to interact with in these settings. 
From there, we talk more about student support resources. We introduce, for example, academic services in a more formal way. We have content about career services and peer education. We also wanted to make sure that students had a firm understanding of student development and campus life components. So we talk about registered student organizations, health services, residence life, and we begin to wrap that all up, making sure that we cover what we call the taking care of business components, where we make sure students have an understanding of financial aid, the business office, the office of the registrar, and all of these other key functional areas that will also support their experience. So as you know, many of our students are the first in their families to go to college. Um, and for them, this is a new experience and maybe they can't always go back to their families and get the advice that some of us have available to us. Uh, regardless of whether or not you're the first in your family or maybe the 15th, uh, it can be a daunting experience. So talk to me a little bit in an age where we're getting so much information thrown at us all the time. How do you and your, you and your team approach it so that the content that you created was easily understood, clear and concise. It's a great question because we had to immediately remember that we could not share everything in new student orientation. And even if we tried, that would not be the best way for students to learn and remember it. So as we began to structure the content, we led with having students in mind. What is the most important thing for an incoming student to know? To what level of detail do they need to know that? And in what order should we introduce these topics? We understood that we would have opportunity to build on everything that we introduced, but we wanted to drive the process with those initial goals and that initial introduction in mind. We also knew that in the online format, we wanted to make sure that the style and the type of content was varied so that it would be engaging and it would be meaningful to anyone watching it. So that led us to produce a great combination of recorded interviews, some animated videos, which are new to us and very exciting. We have written overviews of some other content, some short quizzes to check for understanding and help us follow up if there's something that we think we didn't communicate as well as we could have. And we also have discussion boards. So the entire incoming class can interact right there in Canvas and they can share their excitement and their questions together. So it sounds like there's a lot of great content that you've created. It's, I, as I said earlier, I've seen it. It's fun, it's informative, and it's really great to have, not only as a new student, but I think as well, as someone who's been here at CBU now for a year, I really learned a lot about the new student orientation experience. If someone, parent, alumnus, maybe a current student wanted to know more about what you've produced, how might they access that? So right now, Jack, the materials are in the online Canvas course, but we are working on a plan to share many of those elements throughout the CBU website, the newly launched CBU website in the very near future. And so we'll have opportunities for folks to see more of the content. What we will be doing today as an introduction is we're going to make one of the videos available on the Academic Services webpage immediately following this conversation. And so for anyone who wants to check that out as a preview, you can visit cbu.edu slash advising. And in particular, I think the video from J.P. Mattis, our student government president, would be an important one for folks to see. He really shares the student voice as part of new student orientation, and some of our incoming students and our rising sophomores will recognize him as their very own orientation guide who has been supporting their time. That's great. Uh, J.P. is just one of the many great student leaders we have here on campus, and uh, I really enjoy my interactions with him as well as the other SGA leaders. Uh, they're committed to doing the right things by the students and they really have been great partners during my time here at CBU. Uh, obviously, it's been a while since I had the new student experience back at LaSalle University, but my recollection is when we did it in person, it was a great way for me to ease my way into college life, for me to have a chance to meet some friends uh, who stayed with me for the rest of my life, and then also to learn, obviously, how to begin navigating a new environment at a college or a university. Can we talk a little bit about some of the experiences that you have in the in-person experience that we've had in past years, how you've incorporated them into this online or virtual experience for orientation so that it remains fun as well as informative? 
Yes, absolutely. So I mentioned very briefly the discussion boards that are in Canvas that give the entire class an opportunity to connect with one another, to ask questions and share that experience. We know that is a different process, but we've seen a tremendous amount of engagement and interaction on those discussion boards. We know that is an area where students are connecting. This is also a really great time for me to formally introduce our orientation guides. We have 20 upper class students who have been working diligently all summer with an assigned group of incoming students to create those small group connections that are reminiscent of what we were able to do on campus when everyone was together. They have been creative and innovative in doing that, including having TikTok challenges and group me messages and WebEx pizza parties and lots of different things that they've facilitated to make sure that those bonds and connections are there and will be ready to go for the academic year in a way that we would have otherwise facilitated on campus, but we had to do a little bit more innovatively this time around. We're also excited that our orientation guides will continue to engage with students all the way through Welcome Weekend. And so that's really when they formally finish their role. And we hope that students will have a chance to see even more orientation guides as part of those breakout sessions. So obviously we've had to make a lot of changes this year, starting back in March. And while we're very excited about the prospect of returning to campus in this hybrid model that will be adopting come August. Uh, we realize that for now, uh, we're going to continue to have to work in a different environment. Ultimately, we all hope and pray that we'll get back to an area where we're not having to do some of the things we have to do today and that there'll be a vaccine discovered and that'll be available for the coronavirus. When we do make that transition, do you anticipate that there'll be anything that we've learned or employing now as part of online orientation that will continue on as we move back to an in-person orientation experience? I do, Jack. I think we learned some tremendous things. And I want to give a special thank you to T. Neely and all of his work from the academic services team and driving a lot of those changes that I just described here. T. started his role with a plan for in-person orientation, but that he wanted to improve and enhance and make better for our student experience. And so I think it was the combination of his ideas, the need for innovation, and the partnership with those other units that helped us launch something really great and important for our students this year. We don't want to lose that in the future because we have learned new things that are important. And so I imagine that we'll see a little bit more of a hybrid type offering where we might release some videos to students before they come for something like an in-person orientation session. More collaboration with the orientation guides and the great ways that we've seen this year. Um, so we look forward to getting students back on campus and making sure that we also have that in-person experience of making new friends and seeing where your classes will be. But we do want to hold on to some of the great learnings that have come out of this experience as well. That's great. Um, so obviously we're making the final preparations for the start of the fall semester, which will begin with classes in earnest August 17th. That's a Monday. Uh, as students continue to work through uh, the final stages of orientation and getting ready for the fall semester. Do you have any tips for them? Uh, and also perhaps any advice for their parents and families and maybe where they might be able to access some additional resources during the transition to what we hope and know will be a great experience here at CBU. Yes. So Jack, I would encourage students to continue to review the NSO content that we have in a way that applies to their circumstances and what they expect for this fall, whether that's what they're looking forward to in their major and the connections they find in those discussion boards, um, or another idea that sparks their interest about what they plan to do once they begin here at CBU. Another great benefit of moving everything online is that students can refer back to the NSO modules. So we will leave those open in the coming weeks and once the year starts. I would encourage students to remember that and to refer back to those for a refresher or a point of reference as they begin to undertake some of these functions once they get started. 
Um, there is also a great opportunity for students to share some of the content with parents and family members and other loved ones. Uh, so as we begin to make those more available, we would encourage anyone who's interested to take a look and to also make sure that everyone is staying in touch with the academic services team. We're all here to help and to make those connections, and we look forward to welcoming our incoming class very soon. So I first uh, want to thank you, Jessica, for making the time to be with us today. You provided a lot of great information. I know that our students and parents and many others will appreciate this. Uh, at the same time, I also want to thank and acknowledge uh, you and your colleagues at Academic Services for the great work that you have done, not only preparing us for orientation and welcoming our new students to campus, but the work you do day in and day out the key for us here at CBU and you, you, you and your colleagues along with many others live this model day in and day out is that we are committed to the success of our students. So once again, thank you to you and your colleagues at Academic Services. I uh, appreciate you making the time to be here today. Uh, for those of you at home, if you would like further information about the services provided by Jessica and her colleagues, There'll be a bumper at the end of this that will show some information how you can learn more about academic services and the team there. And then finally, I wanna thank you for tuning in today and hope to see you again next Tuesday when we have the next in our series of CBU Conversations.